everybody for uh, coming to session eight uh, and checking out, you know, kind of our short lived journey so far in family engagement um, in Claremont Northeastern. Uh, and just kind of share this information with you guys uh, today. A little bit about me. This is my um, 12th year in education. All of them have been at the Claremont Northeastern School District. Um, I came here from uh, actually our specialized probation department and had a lot of kids on probation uh, in the district when I first uh, learned about the district and started learning more. Um, and eventually I uh, got my master's in special education uh, 12 years ago, it seems super fast, but uh, for the first eight, I was the behavior intervention specialist for the district. Um, and then really my main focuses uh, for the last four years have been uh, PBIS, school safety, truancy, uh, crisis prevention, threat assessments. So really um, a lot of things that have been uh, put in play over the last four years have been them giving me the leeway to really kind of dig into some things that were issues. And one of the things we never really put a ton of time and energy into was family engagement. And so really, I think it's the loose ends that, that a lot of districts have so many great things going on and, and really just kind of uh, tying it all together. So that's kind of my work experience. I've been married for 11 years to my wife, Michelle, and then I, am, I have two kids. I have two redheaded kids. So we uh, go through lots of sunscreen in the summer, um, which is and anyone who has uh, fair skinned children kind of understand that struggle. And then I'm an unqualified soccer coach to many kids. So uh, being a football person my whole life, uh, my kids wanted to do soccer and I like to be involved. So now I'm not just the coach of one small youth soccer team. I'm the coach of two of them. So when I go over to our elementary, I've got about, uh, over the years, there's probably about 20 or 30 kids who yell coach, and I have no idea that they're talking to me half the time. So it's a lot of more fun than I thought it would be, but it's it's definitely something I do to get myself kind of back to grounded and, and, and um, kind of work with the community and the kids and get to know families. So it's been a lot of fun. One of the things that we're going to talk about today, and I want you guys to understand, understand is that uh, we'll have a deeper understanding of how the the NNPS, the National Network for Partnership Schools and OSU, along with our state support teams have helped develop a, develop a strong foundation for family engagement. And then really how you guys can take some small uh, little changes that you probably already have uh, going really well for you and make a, a deeper impact into the future. And so those are the things that we're gonna work on during this session. And so before we even get started, I want you guys to take about five minutes uh, either jot down, make some notes, just what your district currently does to engage families and then how are you measuring them. So I'll give you guys about five minutes, uh, put a few of those things up in the chat box if you can, and then ways that you measure them in the chat box and we'll talk about them here in a second. So the first one was uh, school engages families with open house nights and round table conferences. Parent mentor support open houses, conferences, social get togethers. PTA, Fall Fest, Ice Cream Socials, et cetera. Yeah, those are all the, the kind of pieces that we're talking about is um, even virtual engagements and parent mentors. I know it's been difficult for a lot of families to really wrap their heads around how they can be involved because of COVID. Um, this one even says family engagements like trunk or treat, literacy nights, art, parent engagement with academics, business, community partnerships, uh, such as care and share and accountability committees. Okay, we'll let people keep putting things in the chat, but I'm going to go ahead and move forward a second. And one of the things, we had the same conversation when we started down the road of family engagement. Uh, when I started 
learning about the family engagement at OSU, um, and I joined the, the fellow uh, Family Engagement Leaders of Ohio group uh, before we ever got into any of the family engagement work was really starting to, to think about us not having a system in place for all of our buildings, considering from preschool all the way to 12th grade, uh, to kind of talk across family engagement all the way across the board. So here are all the things that uh, two years ago we were doing before COVID um, for ways to engage our families uh, across the district. These are the things that uh, our administrators and their building leadership teams put down. And the thing that was interesting is some of these things were on competing nights. Some of these things uh, were nights that happened in succession. But uh, there was no conversation ever with a calendar committee of any kind to get these things lined up. And so what it did do for us was sometimes we would put a lot of time, energy and money into a literacy night and there would be uh, it would be senior night for athletics. So you would lose a large chunk of families or ways to figure out if you were even making the mark, you'd have a bunch of people there. But did you really do what you thought you were going to do when you set up for the meeting? And so. We took it to the next level and we, at our DLT meeting, we were using the Cyper, uh, which is a, a screening tool you can use to see if your DLT is uh, having the implementation that you were hoping for it to have. And one of the things that is asked in the, in the, on the survey is, does the DLT engage the community in continuous improvement? And we had scored ourselves at a two at a very high level. So these are just the people um, in our DLT that uh, we're looking at this. And so what we decided to do was really develop our own vision and mission statement regarding family engagement. And this was even before we were able to join the National Network for Partnership Schools. We thought we uh, really needed to improve the way that we started reaching out to families. And the first part was having some data to understand that. And so what we ended up doing was surveying our buildings straight up and said, uh, do you have a formal process in place uh, with written goals and objectives along with post data about your family engagement. And the one thing we thought we would use this for was finding out if there were good things happening that we just weren't talking about. And what we got was 20% of our buildings said no and 80% said, yeah, we do, but it's only informal. We just talk about it and then we plan our events. Uh, and this was kind of the, the layout of, of what our buildings were doing across the board the subjects they were hitting. So 100% of them had something to do with art. And then it just kind of broke it down from there on the subjects from the building level. Um, and then we said, what are we using to really engage families, right? So everybody said they were using our school app, which sent text messages and emails, uh, posted to Twitter and Facebook, and then people were putting stuff on websites. So there was a lot of good information on here to really see what, what we were doing as a building before we ever started family engagement. Um, and that was really that aha moment for us as a district from the district level. And my job as the district lead was to continue to push this initiative at the DLT level, which really let us know that we needed to put more time, energy, money, and resources into it. Because what I found out through my work with PBIS is, is if you make that a district goal and you're talking about it at the DLT level, it forces everybody at the table to to bring data forward because that's the kind of high level meeting we were having at our DLT meetings, but it was also forcing us to allocate time, money, and resources based off the data that we were getting to improve those outcomes for everyone. So um, what we did was we took the OSU Family School Partnership Family Survey. Um, we used it as a Google form. We sent out to families. We got feedback from all of our families, looked at our district level data, and then the, the uh, um, looked at the district level data, and then we also broke it down by buildings so buildings could look at it. And someone's question was DLT, which is our district leadership team. So we're part of the OIP process here. Uh, we have state support team help here. We have Vicki Miller from state support team 13. Um, so we have monthly meetings with our district leadership team, or we used to have monthly meetings, and now we're doing them uh, bi-monthly. And um, we use that district level data to really build a family engagement model from the ground up based on the Epstein family engagement model. And so we know those were the things that we had to do here and we didn't really know how to do it. And so one of the things that I just wanna give a quick shout out to if you guys haven't had a chance to, there's an introduction to family engagement uh, 
self-moderated course you guys can take from Harvard WebEx. I really suggest that it's self-paced. It's about six weeks long. It's a great activity to do in the summers. It really uh, reiterates all of the work that uh, Ohio State's Family Engagement Center does. Uh, there's lots of great videos you can share with staff on there that you're allowed to download right from it. I just really can't say enough about it, putting people in the right direction for, um, thanks for putting that in the chat box too, um, Hadley, because I think it's, it's a great resource for people just to, to kind of go back and re uh, reference, um, frame some information and, and pose some questions to your community. I'll just take a quick second to share these. Those are those six keys to family engagement that Joyce Epstein talks about. And so we started building this thing forward. And one of the biggest things we had to do was sit down and come up with our own definition. And we'd sat down with our title teachers. We sat down with our building administrators, uh, many of them who had taken that free course that we talked about. And one of the things we really wanted to find out was what our definition or our working definition would be. And we came up with family engagement refers to the systematic inclusion of families and activities, programs that promote children's development, learning and wellness, including the planning, development and evaluation of those activities. So we wanted to make sure that we promoted everything to all families. Uh, there's a great uh, training that we went to talking about framing information. And so we always talk about family engagement as opportunities for all families because we really believe that uh, cultivating partnerships with families is an opportunity for our school staff as well as everyone to kind of really build that whole child. So from that piece, we really started building our mission statement on family engagement. And I know that, that those kind of small pieces to it don't seem as important as the actual action steps, but for a district that didn't have anything, we knew we needed to start somewhere. And so that's what we did. And what we ended up with was our family and community engagement field guide first edition, which is something I'll share with you guys in a minute. But really the biggest piece to that puzzle is finding ways to increase active participation. I know uh, if you guys got to do the, the last round of um, webinars was the one that uh, Barbara Boone was talking about, how do you vision family engagement or what does that look like? And really finding ways to communicate and collaborate between family, staff, and community, and building some type of a partnership where we can create meaningful partnerships that gains in student achievement was like our biggest goal. And the conversation we had was, is from nothing, we need to build something. And so just developing it right now and making sure that the goal is clear and the district-wide expectations for family engagement were set by the end of this school year. And I know that's kind of been muddled with, uh, with the, uh, you know, research for COVID because a lot of the families who were able to get back in the building, we've had to cut that back off again. But what we really want to make sure we're doing is digging into evidence-based approaches for family engagement. We really want to be able to say that with the support from multiple areas, because we want to know, we want our families to know that we collaborated with people who are also experts. So they don't just assume that we're out reading a book and we want to claim that we're experts. So we wanted to develop that strong pre-K to 12 family engagement model that has a collaborative relationship across the board and families are a part of that. And so um, the term that we came back to and we kept talking about was if parents feel like the event that we hold increases their ability to have a positive effect on their kid or make a better student, they're gonna show up. And if we miss that mark of what we, we talk about in our district meetings all the time or our planning meetings for action teams is parent efficacy, which is a parent sense of thinking that if I do something for my kid, it matters. That's like the easiest way to say it, right? Um, parents who have a high sense of efficacy, help children do well in school, be happy and safe. They also have a lot of data now showing that parents who feel like they have a high level of efficacy can overcome negative influences and keep their child away from troublemakers, drugs, and alcohol. But also I think it takes some of the pressure off when your activities allow you to have parents feel that there's a high sense of efficacy in the, in the events that you're doing because you can overcome a lot of challenges that way. And some of it's um, increased communication, making sure there's transparency because these parents are involved. So we always come back to the term parent efficacy. And if we're gonna do an event, how does it impact parent efficacy? Because if we do that in this district, we feel like parents will show up. 
We don't want to call it a barrier anymore. We just want people to know that this is the reality. If we're going to have an event and nobody shows up, it's probably because we missed the mark. So um, this is the link here that has the uh, family engagement survey in it. Um, I'll share that in the chat box in a little bit if you guys want to look through that survey. But what we did do is we used it uh, from their website. And what's nice now is, is we have a pre-COVID, I was talking about this and kind of the, the model was, we gave this and I believe it was December of 2019 before everything shut down due to COVID. Um, and I'll look at some of just some of the information you guys can look at big picture wise. And you'll see the differences in the questions that we ask families based off of it. But one of the things we were having an aha moment about the other day was, is when we gave this last spring, we have been putting a ton of energy on our website, putting a ton of energy into making sure we were hitting people's marks in social media. And as you can see on here, parents wanted in an email or they wanted in a text message. Overwhelmingly want those two options given to them. People are tired of seeing information posted on Facebook. I think sometimes Facebook and Twitter are ways that administrators can connect with other administrators in this district or other uh, professionals to show off what we're doing. But the truth was, it didn't move the needle for our families. And so when we talk about getting information out, we changed the way that we handle text messaging by uh, utilizing one of our features inside of our school website more that sends text messages um, and sends emails. And then we also have a program called Convolved Now uh, that we've been working on for a while that we can have two-way communication with families. Uh, one of the other big moments in our survey, these are questions that we added to it, was what time of day people wanted to be communicated with. And you can kind of see uh, morning and afternoon are fine, but people really want to be left alone in the evening, which I don't blame them. But I showed you guys before the chart that had these same exact questions in them about what we were offering to families or how we were trying to engage them. This is where they want to be engaged at. And what was interesting to me was you can see the PBIS behavior rocket way. Um, having a large presence outside of the academic world. But the number one thing that families want to learn more about is social emotional learning. So, and mental health, those were the two highest uh, scoring of all in this entire survey. So you can really see like in this district, we start getting a better sense of, of what's important to our families. And so uh, talking it from a three tiered model, we know that these are some things that maybe we want to focus on in the first uh, in the first year of family engagement, because that's explicitly what our families asked for. And so this is some of the survey data. I'm not going to read them word by word to you guys, but one of the questions just says, uh, I can be involved in the school improvement planning and decision making for my child's school. And what we saw was interesting is that uh, purple is strongly agree, green is agree, and then orange is neutral. What we saw was that the families were moving between purple and green and then very few of them were moved in the same uh, needle on the other side with a strongly disagree and strong and agree or disagree. Um, but that middle group fluctuated a lot more than we thought it would. So you really do have an opportunity to sway and over communicate with families and make sure that they know um, that the mark can be hit. And we really have an opportunity to, to make people have a different uh, framing our mindset about family engagement in this district. So um, these other ones that talk about resources for families, you can really see uh, the purple and green take up a, a fairly similar chunk. But what was interesting on this particular question is that due to COVID and us trying to put as many resources out as possible, we really did move the needle because we spent a ton of time giving adults information about mental health we actually started for the first time, we have a student a support, we call it a, uh, like an employee assistance program. So we call it an SAP, a student assistance program here. Uh, we partner with Mercy Health. It's not a cheap program to offer, but it gives our students, just like you have as a, as a business, um, an EAP. So our students have a phone number, kids who are 16 and up can call without parent permission. They can directly talk to a mental health therapist um, it gives them six private practice visits. So we paid extra instead of just having three, our students can have six private practice visits per issue per year. So uh, we started putting that information out more and our families can, can connect to that with anyone who lives in their household. 
Um, and they can also call and just ask for other additional resources about college and career readiness. It could be job postings. It could be child care. So we're trying to find ways to support our families in as many ways as possible. And with us being on the edge of Appalachia, a lot of times you find families who uh, maybe mistrust or, or don't really want to let the school know all of their business, which families have the right to their privacy. And this gives them that option and still have resources. The only data we get back is if somebody used it. So we had, we had over uh, 200 uh, visits to the website for resources and we had under uh, around 10 people use the phone service uh, last year. And we're continuing again this year. So um, this data is just the district overview. And we broke these down and gave them to buildings to look at again. And so um, inside of our family engagement field guide, if we have some time, I'll share with you guys a little bit more kind of what it looks like. But what we did have happen is we set up three separate action teams at the elementary, middle, and high. And the biggest focus was getting variety onto those teams. And, and really the variety is we have some people that we know take up a majority of our time, whether it's positive or negative. They're always in contact with the administrators, but we didn't shy away from those high need families that want to be involved. And so we put them on these teams. Um, variety was one of the most important things. So we, we did continue to ask and we end up having uh, one family who has a student um, with an IEP on every family. So we have students with disabilities on every, or families with a student who has a disability in every family. Uh, we have a student on the high school team, and then they all attended the NNPS, National Network for Partnership Schools training. Uh, teams right now, uh, we did that right before school got out and families will help them come up with their one year goals and plans. Uh, the building leadership teams and what's great for us right now is we are award recipients of the comprehensive state literacy development grant at all three buildings and inside of each one of those grants were paid positions for family engagement leaders per building so we're really fortunate right now to have a lot of that heavy work being taken on by stipend positions and what is great is is they're reaching out to these family teams now and we're having those scheduled one of the nice pieces is they're going to look at the schedule that the the uh, leaders and the teams have started putting together for the future, whether they're remote or in person, family engagement nights. But there's also data that we can look at uh, from the events we had this fall. So they're really doing a lot of work. Um, in August, we just had our first DLT meeting of the year, so our district leadership team meeting. And what's, what's a, a big piece, and I, I left it out for a second, is now our district has we went from three goals at our district leadership level to four, and our fourth goal is solely on family engagement. So we have math, literacy, PBIS, our school and climate and culture, and we have family engagement as a district level goal, which was a huge win for me because now we know that time, money, resource allocation, and not to mention data sharing and accountability are happening at all levels. So TBTs have to talk about it, which is our teacher-based teams. Our DLTs have to talk about it, and so do our building leadership team. So now family engagement is embedded into the work that we do. And so each one of our elementary, middle school, and high school actually use family engagement uh, as a topic that they have to share out on, and they know they're going to be sharing out on it regularly at DLT meetings. So you can kind of see this is just an example of what the elementary had put up about theirs. Um, our middle school team talked about their open house and conference nights. So one of the things that they're doing is student-led conferences. Uh, that's gonna be a big part of their family engagement. They did it last year um, and they're really gonna be talking with their students and, and ensuring they're ready to present. Um, the open house night, they changed the way that they did it. They really went on the limb and kind of made it as an orientation night. But one of the things with that type of heavy lift and logistics was it did stress a lot of families out and we have data to show them and say, that might not have been the best way for us to communicate in the future. So um, that building's teacher base team, which is what a TBT is, allows them to look at the data from the open house night and then go back and share it with their family engagement team, which is just a wonderful way for us to make sure that we're hitting marks, right? Uh, the high school teams are gonna meet quarterly with their family engagement teams and talk about the things that they've been doing. 
Uh, and one of them last spring is they did a one book, one school. So they did a wonderful job um, with a book study with all families to get engaged and they used Just Mercy. It went really, really well for our students. And then um, just continuing to build on this. And so one of the things that we wanted to say or look at was um, ways that we can, hold on a second, I'll just show you guys this really quickly before I come back to that one, is, is looking at the data from the building leadership teams or the surveys that we put out and the team members that we have on the action teams made a big difference. So with, I think there's five families on every action team right now. And so I put some of their quotes up. I, I sent them all an email and asked them what their thoughts were about being on a family engagement team. And they said, I really like changes are being made to the elementary website. It's nice when it's finished because we can use it as a one-stop shop to find all the information we need. We also had that they really liked that they've gotten parents involved. It's a good way to feel seen and important. Um, one of the ways that I thought was really impressive is that they said that it's nice to have people who have different opinions, um, which is a goal of ours is to, to respectfully disagree. It's really hard to see people do that anymore, but I think it's great that we get to do that. Uh, and these families were wonderful when we had them in there. The questions that we started developing on making sure we hit that parent efficacy mark was uh, these types of questions. So if it's a district-wide event, we'll ask them which building did they visit. And then we say, was it a positive experience for their family? And then the next one is, was it a useful way to spend your time? So these are all related to our open house questions uh, that we had on the first day of school. And, and for some districts, I know people don't show up to open house but it's like the second Claremont County Fair for us here. We have probably a thousand people on campus going around, checking out the different buildings and catching up with people. Um, and so one of the things we talk about in our, our survey is, did we hit this mark of giving people better skills to engage our student in learning? And so you can see it spread off across the board because some of our family engagement uh, work on open house was still very laxed. Um, but we did see there's a, there's a positive trend here um, and then we said, how likely are you to come to other school related events throughout the year? And so one of the things that we want to be able to do is get real feedback from them. And this is some of the reasons people said that they didn't come or couldn't make it. There were no masks, there was no social distancing, children with anxiety and too many people. And what, it, what happens now is, is when we break this data down by building, we're able to say, are there changes you can make in your building and still give buildings autonomy to take this data serious and make differences. And I think that's important for us is to really look at it from that lens and say, maybe there's some things we can do differently or do better. And so we took that same survey and I think it's great for us here is we can compare apples to apples and look at kindergarten readiness the same way with that same survey, that post-survey data. Uh, we have about 95, I think we're at 100, 102 right now kindergartners. So the question that we posed to those families was, do you feel like the kindergarten readiness day that was that we had like three days before kindergarten started was a useful way to spend their time? And the questions are all very similar in nature. So we can really ask them and ask families. So then we can sit down as a action team and talk about our impact. Was attendance where we wanted it to be? Were the results that we got matching the, the goal that we had set out for the day? So I'm gonna come back to this question here in a second with you guys is, is just take, I know we're running really short on time, but just take a second and think about some of the information that I gave you guys is, are there ways that you can change the delivery of the family engagement activities you have now? And then are there other ways that you've learned here to measure impact differently in the future? And I know that's a lot of information in a short amount of time, I'm sorry. I was trying to go as fast as I could, but I think that there's, the aha moment for us was when we started really digging into parent efficacy and why people don't show up in some places and show up in others is because uh, parents felt like they could, it made a difference in their child's life if they showed up. So uh, that's one of the things we really wanted to start measuring. So just take a second, if you wanna put it in the comment box, we'll talk about it if we can. I know some of you guys have to get going to another meeting, but I really do appreciate everyone's time. Um, the main takeaway, like I said, is really looking at parent efficacy for you guys and your family engagement and then really getting good data to start. And so for us now is we're gonna to continue to use uh, the partnership survey every year to uh, measure our growth and we should continue to see growth.
So, so if not, we can change our Mr. Dorsey, we have one about getting a copy of your field guide. I don't know if you're you're sharing that widely. Yes, I'll tell you what I'll do is I can um, I'll put a link to it. Can I just send that to you? Yes. And we can post it on the website and it actually may actually be posted. I think it's already on your website. I think I gave it to Barbara this summer. Okay. We will make sure that it goes with your um, presentation materials so that folks yeah, can Those find are all live links in the presentation if we just want to pop one of those down there. Okay, perfect. And then there was another um, question regarding the program that you use for text messages. Yeah, it's called it's called Convolved, and we've had a few challenges with it about getting the data quickly because uh, it pulls down nightly new student enrollment from your student information system. What is really nice is about Convolved, as we've learned about it through our, uh, we're also in the NKERN with Harvard, the Rural Education uh, Network, and uh, we worked on it a little bit with student um, truancy. That was one of the projects that they had, and we learned about it. It actually... Um, allows you to do two-way communication and it keeps your parents and teachers from using Facebook in a toxic way to deliver messages back and forth. So you send an initial message out to families saying you can opt out, please hit stop. It gives you some metrics back on saying who hit stop. So like uh, yesterday, our high school staff or our principal sent a message out to all families and of the 400 and some students, five families said stop. So now we can actually attach PDFs and images. So if we want to send out newsletters or teachers want to send out messages to families about what to expect that week or ways to engage the families at home, from kindergarten to 12th grade, our teachers can add a PDF to a text message or a picture with a quick tip on it and send it out. And what it is nice is, is if you put a few um, brackets or, or um, quotes around certain things and type the word student or attendance, It'll personalize the message and pull their information out of our student information system. So I get them from my son and it always says Cooper, uh, Cooper did a wonderful job today. He was rewarded with 10 PBIS points for demonstrating the rocket way, whatever that might be. And it, it's a wonderful resource to use that way. Um, but we were able to secure that through one of our other grants with the Department of Justice because uh, it's pretty pricey. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And so just take a moment to um, join me in the chat and thanking Mr. Dorsey for sharing um, your wealth of information. Of course, I love seeing um, how you have engaged with parents in the use of data to um, drive decision making. So that um, is wonderful. We are now going to take a 15 minute break. I've also dropped the link in if this is your last session. We certainly hope that you come back for our um, lunch session as well as um, all of the afternoon sessions. But if this is your last session, please take a moment to complete the survey. We're interested in your feedback. Um, we're asking folks to only complete that once. So if you are planning on sticking around, um, you will see the survey um, pop into your chat in uh, many of the other sessions and at the end of the day. Um, we will reconvene at 12.15, so grab some lunch and head back in to our lunch presentation. Thank you so much. And thank you to Hadley for jumping in for me while I had some technical difficulties. I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs>